how much power we would hold if we actually meaningfully connect with those indigenous communities that have so much wisdom and in their own ways are telling their story and what they believe is right. Okay, welcome to another podcast episode from Envision. I'm falling over on my chair here. Um, podcasting from the jungle. Um, we have Tiago here, who I've heard is quite epic in the world of government and knowledge on how, how we can switch things up. Yes, so, I'm so excited to be here. Me too. I'm stoked to, to get into this with you and kind of hear some of your wisdom. Um, yes, we were just talking briefly right before before we got on here um, about government and what we're doing kind of here with Freedom Culture and with the Academy and, um, yeah, what how we might be able to change the bigger picture. Correct. I think um, I would love to start this, this talk saying that things are changing and government is changing and we're really facing this new paradigm. Um, you have thought like years and years before we had nothing. We had little tribes. Mm. Then you start to have kingdoms and you had this person that through their family would take control of the land. And then you switch to, okay, now let's have democracy, right? Let's the people decide who will decide things for them. Yeah. And now we're in a different world of technology that actually allows us not to just go there and vote every four or five years, mm. but we can decide for someone to decide what to do. But we can have this new paradigm that we're voting for someone to structure decision making in a way that everyone now has a voice. We have technology for that now. Mm. So I think that's a, something very interesting to see. And some countries are really advancing that. Uh, particularly, there's a, a partnership called the Open Government Partnership. That is, a, there's 79 countries now that every two years they put an action plan on how they're going to make government more open and inclusive. Yeah. And um, I think the key priorities for this year are participation and inclusion. So mm. how do we make people participate in those decisions? So there's now even open budget, right? So cities like Madrid, yeah. they, here's, I have X amount of money. What do we as a community want to spend on? Go and vote. Let's collectively decide mm. on how do we use those resources for the greater good. Yeah. So do you think that that might get, so if everybody has an opinion, they're not going to all line up. So then how do you keep it from being messy? Well, I think there's this structure and technology on how people discussing with people, having those healthy conversations mm -hmm. and having masses, right? So that's part of what makes politics, right? It's like the more things are popular at that particular time, they get those votes. And, and, and the more that we now democratize that conversation and certain conversations become more and more popular and more and more people are talking about it, mm -hmm. they cre we create this mass consciousness, right? And those things race to the top. Is this a perfect world? Not yet. We're trying to figure it out. And that's the world of fake news that yeah. you see that some people put a lot of money for bad information and they spread mm -hmm. and um, not good. But there's a lot of good, too, that we're trying to figure out how do we foster that side of the, the technology. Yeah. Um, so that's part of it, right? Like having that collective conversations, the more they become popular, mm -hmm. the more they race to the top and you hear the Me Too movement. That's particularly something that came from social media mm. and in a matter of a couple of months it became a big thing and you have governments from around the world talking about that and starting to think about what how can we change our institutions how can we change our education system to empower people not to go through this yeah there's no big lobbying as far as i know or someone paying for this it was came from the ground up from right? the people yeah from the people and mm. i think the big difference you can see in those movements is those are topics that resonates with a lot of people, mm. but they're based on deep, meaningful values of humanity and consciousness, right? Yeah. It's we do not allow those things to happen. We don't want women to be going through this. We don't want our children going through this. That resonates. So when we're thinking about those mass conversations, we need to let go of that ego, of that me, that great photo that I'm going to post on Instagram of myself mm -hmm. to what is meaningful, what really here will advance our community. Yeah. That will resonate through stories and how people really connect with their emotions, right? So yeah. that Me Too, big movement, right? Yeah. The, the movement on the Syrian refugees when you had one photo and one photo only of this little kid that drowned in a beach um, in Europe. And that photo 
went viral. Newspaper, social media, and governments changed their policies to welcome more, um, you know, refugees. And that was not a new thing. A lot of people knew about it, but by that photo, it created a momento to make change. Yeah, so it's essentially just about the, the storytelling and the emotion and connecting those two. And those two create a movement, and from that movement then, like, it starts to change. create. Yeah, it starts to create influence, right? So you see that as a change. Back in the day, you would have lobbies, right? Paying big bucks or companies saying, we wanted to legalize X or we wanted to change X legislation. Mm -hmm. And you had that lobby going on. Yeah. Now we're in a movement that that doesn't need to come from the top anymore. That can come from the bottom up. Is yeah. it easy? No, but it's possible. We have seen it happen. And now social influencers, people that are doing good work out there, mm -hmm. have a voice, have the vehicle and the means to come up right, and become a regional discussion, a municipal discussion, a global discussion. Yeah. It's possible. So then how is it we... You need a story, obviously. You need to have something to say. Um, once you found something to say, what, like, what are the tips and tricks? Because you've assisted um, different people in government um, in different areas. So I'm guessing you might have some tips and tricks on how people can start a movement. Yeah, so, um, you know, here's I'm taking my hat as just a, a citizen that had the privilege to work um, in the public sector. I think it comes down to values, right? Mm -hmm. So when we are at that point, we're really dealing with, is it fair? Is it legal? Do we have the capacity to do so? Mm -hmm. um, so those com conversations come. And how much of impact this yeah. will have, right? So that's the big question that we governments are trying to to always answer. There's so many things we would like to change, but there are limited resources. Mm -hmm. What would give us the best impact um, in society, in the greater good? And how do we measure those things? That's a big question that I think it's really hard for people, um, you know, when you're just trying to do good and you, like, this is good, but when you raise that to a national or a global level, how do we measure that good? And how do we show people that this is good? So that's mm -hmm. part of one of a big trick, of course, the emotion, the storytelling, but it needs to be based on facts mm -hmm. and evidence. You're still dealing with a lot of very pragmatic people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the third piece is how do we show progress over time in a way that resonates with people, right? It's not just I'm building housing for the poor. This is a good thing, but yeah. it's we built this amount of houses. We got 10,000 people out of poverty. Those children are now going to education and they're becoming X. You see how that in a macro level, yeah. it was a good, but you can see how that make a greater good collectively. Yeah. Um, so that's not easy, but I think the more that we start to think that way yeah. from the get-go mm -hmm. and we use technology to, to do that, I think it, it's very important. Yeah, yeah. So what is, what is one thing that you would like to see changed? Because it's the Canadian government that you, that you work with, but so it can be for, for Canada or globally, whatever. Like, but what's that one thing? If you had a magic wand and you could change it, what would it be? Um, there are two things I'm very passionate about, but I'll try to go to the first one. I think it's inclusion. Mm -hmm. I think we talk a lot about inclusion, but I don't think we have done it properly. It's very easy to say, okay, I'm going to invite this gay kid. I'm going to get this black person here. Check, check uh, yeah. to do. Okay, they're here. Um, but to me, that's not fully inclusion and I'm starting to term this name of I'm an inclusionist yes I am <laughs> yeah I am a feminist yes I am I am an inclusionist all the things and yeah. to me what does that mean is can I empower people to be free to be themselves and actually listen to their opinions in the way that they're coming from yeah that's not easy because we all have our preconceptions mm. um, but how much power we would hold if we actually meaningfully connect with those indigenous communities that have so much wisdom and in their own ways are telling their story and what they believe is right, right? Yeah. So we all have a little bit to learn. Um, so those are things that I'm very passionate about, I would love to see. Um, my second, if I may, yeah, quickly, quickly. You may have to. Um, <laughs> I love talking, so uh, I've never been drunk in my life. 
And really? I noticed. That's impressive. Yeah. And I noticed most people think I'm drunk because I'm having a good time, but there's not really a community out there to talk to people to say, you know, if you don't want, you don't have to. And it's cool too.、Mm-hmm. Um, so I would love to see that more, that conversation out there to say, you can be you, you can do whatever you want, and you don't need anything else.、Um, just, just allow yourself to be.、Um, just creating that community would be really cool. Interesting. So there's a culture of peer pressure almost, you're saying. Absolutely.、Yeah. And even thinking about if drinking is cool, being sober is the opposite of not drinking, which means it's really boring.、Mm-hmm. Um, not necessarily the case. And if you go to a bar, like, it, it doesn't mean that I don't want to be with people and socialize.、Mm, yeah. But sometimes all I have is water. You、yeah. know, sometimes I could have a kombucha in a place. It could be a wellness thing、yeah. um, that it doesn't need to have alcohol, and I would be happy there. But I don't find we as a society are quite there yet. Yeah.、Um, and even on a dating scene, you know, it's terrifying. <laughs> You're going to first day, let's go for a drink. Oh,、uh, no. Can we go for a tea or a coffee?、Yeah. You know, or breaking the news to someone and you almost feel embarrassed because、yeah. you don't drink. You don't drink. And、yeah. why do I feel that way? Right. So definitely there's something in society that is making me think that way. Yeah.、Uh, or when people like, let's go for a drink. Oh, shoot, you don't drink. And like, no, I'm. I'm going for a drink because I want to spend time with you. Yeah. And if I drink water or tea or whatever, like, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. It's you. Yeah.、Um, so I think I would love that conversation to get out there.、Um, I started a, like a, a blog and a post got, called Get Life Drunk.、Um, <laughs> so very, very new, but something that I would love to see in the world more. GetLifeDrunk.com? Yeah, like Get Life Drunk on Instagram、oh, okay. or Facebook. And it, it's, it's not about being against alcohol or anything. It's just creating a space for those that don't, don't feel, feel the call、like、to it. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.、Um, that's interesting. I like that. I personally have not very often felt、um, a lot of peer pressure.、Um, so I'm wondering if it's a culture thing, but I love the, the sentiment、um, get life drunk. I think that's really,、yeah. really cool. And allowing people, it almost aligns right with your inclusionist, like allowing people to be who they need to be, who they want to be.、Um, Yeah, I think I love those ideas. I'm, I'm not a pessimist usually, but the, it does seem like there would be a lot of complications in、so、the inclusionist part, for example. There are a lot of areas where we need to heal, where we need to reconnect with、um, different indigenous cultures or different people and meet them where they're at、um, for the lifestyle that they're choosing for themselves、um, without judgment or.、Um, A preconception of what they, they might be like. But how, how do you see that changing? It will take years. I won't lie that to you. It's one of those, in, in, it's a big issue for humanity, right?、Mm-hmm. Like we, we have dealt with slavery for many, many years. And some countries, it was not that long ago,、mm-hmm. you know? And if you go on history in the US, you had, you know, races in a lot of places still.、Um, And if I go even closer, like the trans community, like we're far from including them, right?、Mm. Like, even just by way of separating washrooms, they always struggle having to pick one and don't feel comfortable in any, right?、Mm. Or myself included, I had a friend who was in a wheelchair and I said, Come over. And she's like, Does your house have stairs to get in? And I said, Yes. And I do not have a ramp. That person、mm. was not welcome to my place, not because I didn't care about it, it's、mm. just, As if I don't experience and I don't have those issues, those are not things that the mass or the vast majority would worry about. Yeah. But for those communities, those things matter and matter a lot. And that's、mm. deep to who they are and it's preventing them to have their self expression.、Um, do I think we're going to solve it quickly? No. Do I think that's a conversation we need to continue to have? Absolutely. And the、yeah. more that we do, The more we're going to understand each other. And that's why I love the term, I'm an inclusionist,、mm. because the more that I'm going to have those conversations and it will come from places that I am not familiar with, I may not even agree with certain things, but、yeah. you try to understand them. So understand before judging.、Mm. Understand、yeah. before judging. And I think we often do the opposite. Yeah. That's. That's, I definitely agree. I think we oftentimes, there's snap judgments, right? Or assuming.、Um, as a kid, my dad would always say, assuming makes an ass out of you and me because you make 
negative or wrong assumptions. Um, and then you're labeling somebody something that they're really not. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So how, I mean, you have what sounds like a pretty epic job. It's a speechwriter, right? Um, now I'm leading a global summit on open government. So Canada, okay. it's the leader of the open government partnership. So there are 79 countries that are part of this. Mm -hmm. And they're all, every year they get together on a global summit to discuss how can we make government more open through open data, through whatever priorities that the host country is pushing forward. And Canada is pushing on inclusion, mm -hmm. on participation. How do we get more people to talk and not just the elite, but everyone, the minorities, mm -hmm. and impact. So if we're doing all of this for the great good yeah. how do we show that we're actually making a difference wow so you're running this summit yes it's gonna be in may um <laughs> i keep joking that i'm like three months pregnant it's coming <laughs> um and uh yeah really exciting i'm gonna have about two thousand social influencers and government and civil society getting together um to discuss um, yeah. where do we need to go and um, based on that in terms of how do we create concrete action there is uh, an action plan that every country needs to do every two years. Okay. And they say, here are the 10, 12, 15, 50 things we're going to change. Yeah. And there's an independent report after two years, like, have you done this? Um, so that's the way that we make countries to be accountable. Interesting. And is there any type of, so they're held accountable, and if they don't step up to the plate, what would happen then? I think there is a mechanism uh, for that conversation. I think then step number one is like you get a warning or you're going to be suspended mm -hmm. uh, from participating in the, 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 the partnership. And mm -hmm. eventually, if, if years have gone and nothing has changed, then you may be uh, voted out of the partnership. Okay. That sounds fascinating, and it sounds like you're ultimately, like, so you were talking about inclusion, and now, like, now, I mean, you were working on it already, but you're hosting, you're hosting this that is majorly based on inclusion. Yes. Is it a proud moment? I it's, mean, I know it hasn't happened yet, but... It's a very proud moment because we're already talking about it, right? Yeah. So we, we had a global survey for people from all, around the world to vote under those themes, what they want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And then you can see topics raising, like youth putting their voice saying, we're not being heard and we want it. Yeah. Um, we heard indigenous communities saying, we, we have a voice. And it's easy when we talk in each one of our countries, but when it gets to the global forum, it's like, whoa, we share a lot. And... We're in this place of, if it's all for the great good, yeah. why do we each country need to solve this on our own and mm. spend public money on our own? Like, if someone is more advanced, let's share. Yeah. So a big part of this summit is, you know, peer learning, like, and, and sharing. And if I develop those rules that we test and it makes sense, let's share. Like, yeah. that's not private property. That's public property. And it's this country, but... We're one nation. So it's not always an easy conversation, but it's an important one to have. And, and I've seen magic happen. So uh, one example, you know, the system that uh, Madrid developed to, to vote on a budget. Mm -hmm. I think it was shared with some countries in South America. And I'm not sure which ones, but you had two countries, if I'm not mistaken, using the same tool without having to build a new one yeah. to make their, their budget yeah. for the whole country. Yeah. So see the impact that those conversations can have. Yeah. Yeah. That's fascinating. Um, shit, I just had a question and now it's like fleeted my mind because I'm getting so enthralled with, with all of this. Um, yeah, let's. So you work there and obviously you have a connection with Freedom Culture. Um, how do you see that play out in, in all these things that you're working on? That's such a fantastic question. Um, <laughs> It's a difficult one, difficult one um, because by nature, mm -hmm. governments ended up attracting a lot of very pragmatic, logic people. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to generalize here, but, you know, let's say there's a vast population that that's the environment that we are in. Yeah. Right. Things happen. We need to deal with them in a very factual base. We're dealing with public funds. We need to be very careful. And we have a set of values that mm -hmm. equality, yeah. making yeah. sure that everyone had a chance to apply that those things need to be respected. So you have a whole of that and you have those alternative communities that are living in very different ways that challenge the, the rules that we have 
you know, created no yeah. um, and inspire us to think differently. So I find that connection is really important. And I see those worlds collapsing in the near future. More and more people are participating in communities and festivals like Envision or Burning Man and coming with very different mindsets and questioning. Why do we live the way that we live? Mm -hmm. And those are important conversations, right? And the more they become popular, the more the masses are talking about that, yeah. then the more you're going to get um, more attention and change eventually happen, right? In terms yeah. of inclusion, in terms of freedom, allowing people to be. Um, and I'm particularly interested in the fr freedom culture because here's are those influencers or philanthropists that are rising now. Yeah. Um, I see this whole community coming out and it's a very special one to me. Mm -hmm. Before you had people that were working for companies and you had the people creating companies that their main goal was, I want to create a successful multinational and I'm going to become a wealthy millionaire. Yeah. Now you have this massive community of millennials that want to have the independent, the freedom and the leadership. They don't necessarily want to be the billionaires. They just want to have a business that is something is changing something that they deeply care about mm -hmm. and that they can have their means of survival, like of living comfortably. Yeah. They don't need the 10 billion. Mm. They don't need the 2 billions a year. They just need a salary yeah. that they can put their own. Um, and I see that in the further culture of all these people trying to do good in the world mm -hmm. while at the same time work within the system of an economy to make that happen. And I think that bridge it's very, very important as we move forward. Um, so it's not just going to be this alternative la la land that people live and it's amazing culture, but not immersed in our economy. It's you get those little baby steps that they're getting together and it's getting very exciting and you can see like, whoa, where is this going to go? Yeah. So how you've been in the vision now for a couple of days. Yeah. Are, do you get excited when you see stuff around here? Is there is there something here that you're like, wow, that like I can see the potential that has, and I would just love for that to take off, or like for the government to even take some of something you see here and use it over there and what and what they're doing. Um, yeah, there's a few things. So I think in terms of the the one the honest conversations and coming from a place of here's what i truly think and being fully transparent i find as a matter of politics as a matter of government like sometimes negotiations there's still a lot of culture of i need to protect my own mm -hmm. um you know or my information Shh, information is power so the more i give the more i give power to the other well i'm not sure so i think having that more openness to say Yes, I'm government. It doesn't mean that I'm always perfect. It means that I'm going to have a conversation and you're going to tell me that I'm not doing great and why. And I'm going to listen and we're going to have a conversation about it. Yeah. I think that's still a difficult one, especially for politicians um, that, you know, their their job is based on votes. They want to be liked and respect. They wanted to have support. Um, so when they put their face out there in a crowd that is like, mm, yeah. listen, um, it's <laughs> not always an easy thing or you know, something that they're looking forward to, yeah. but it's an important one. So I think that kind of transparent conversation, um, and we use different terms like fail reports to say, yeah, we screwed up, yeah. but we figured out very quickly and we changed and we're putting out there is important instead of always saying we did the right thing. Yeah. Um, I think that's an important one. And I see projects happening or different ways that I would love to see replicated in society at large. So walking around the food camp here, and all the vendors and seeing organic uh, certified wellness uh, vegetables, like it's a very different concept. Like it, it's mm -hmm. it's nutrition to feel your your wellness, not necessarily to, okay, this is delicious and I'm gonna eat a bunch of like fried chicken or <laughs> a pot of like ice cream, you know, like that yeah. looks good. Um, so I think that conversation, I heard about someone uh, developing um, housing in a very cheap way that is ecologically friendly it's like whoa imagine if we're starting to create more communities like this yeah and 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 saving so much money in construction and having such a less impact in the environment so those things are happening and i think we're more and more open to those concepts um and the more that we share the more that we discuss those things become uh way more helpful and i would love to see them yeah, so essentially, let's say, because we're in a camp here of people that are trying to change the world, 
Um, everybody here at the Freedom Culture Camp uh, is has a passion for improving the world and society as a whole. Um, what are your tips to them? To is it just share your story to get it seen, or like what's your tip? How can how can we really make sure the message is heard from the bottom, kind of like the Me Too movement, from the bottom up to the the people that can actually make change? I think it needs to be based on deep values of things that okay here is an emotion this is a humanity thing that we need to change and putting that information out there in a well crafted way that is meaningful it's not it's not the anger conversation it's not the hate conversation it's not the f word conversation it's the conversation saying mm-hmm. here's the angle from someone that sits in that spot yeah. here's the vision from someone that is walking those shoes right Here's the trans person walking to a washroom, not knowing what to do, and feeling really embarrassed for being who they are. Yeah. Right. Those are things that touch you and touch your children. Or being a black person and and going on the back, and you try not to to get attention for yourself because you're in a white environment. Right. Um, so those kinds of things, like it needs to be done in that way. Um, I think if you collect. The beautiful stories with the data and say, you know, this just not happen only once for this person. This is happening on a daily basis for zillion amount of people, yeah. um, or this is happening to the environment, and then people start to talk about it. Like the whole plastic revolution, right? Like yeah. two a few years ago, we knew plastic was bad, but now it's becoming cities are prohibiting to have plastic bags. Like Montreal, yeah. you can't have it. Like yeah. so, change is happening, right? And and very quickly compared to what used to happen in the past. Yeah. Um, so I think my advice is make sure you have your story well done. Mm-hmm. It's coming from a place of love, from a place of authenticity. Yeah. And values that we as humans share, it shows what people are going through or the environment is going through. Yeah. It has the right data to say here the impact that this is having. Yeah. Um, and saying offering solutions. I think mm, that's important. That's the biggest one, and one that I worry about because I see politics being done based on anger now, right? Yeah. So it's here's all the things that we're fed up with, and that resonates, right? People are like, yeah, I'm angry with this too. This <laughs> yeah. is wrong. We need to change that. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, if I if that's my platform, I'm just saying this out loud, and people are resonating and talking and spreading my message, but no solution. Yeah. Then it leads us to nowhere, right? So I think here's part of here's what's the issue. Here's what we've been doing differently, and here's the impact in the lives that we're changing or in the world that we're changing. Yeah, um, that's a big one. And if I give a technical one, make it short. <laughs> <laughs> short and sweet. Yeah, like um, the closer you get to the top of a government or the, those decision makers. Yeah. Part of our challenge is the amount of information that goes to them, mm, right? So yeah. sometimes you're going to have a meeting for an hour where ministers going to make decisions from military, environment, space, science, um, procurement, indigenous heritage, culture, all of that in an hour. One hour. Yeah. Each one of those will be sometimes millions of dollars, billions of dollars, and and how do we make sure that they have the information? they need to make that decision but yeah. not everything right like we could all hear or read tens of thousands of encyclopedias on or articles on a specific topic but yeah. what is the most relevant the necessary so, information exactly so even for your storytelling as you're posting there how do we make that very succinct and you know even on a personal basis like we're bombarded with information nowadays right yeah. Yeah. how do we make it powerful to the point where here it is um i think that's helpful that's beautiful thank you so much for your time and all the tips and this has been super fascinating got to think about what my message is and how i'm going to get it out there but uh yeah thanks tiago thank you i had such a great time and a great energy and vibe here so thank you and i really hope everyone listening to this feel inspired to say if you care about something and it's bigger than yourself and it's not a selfish thing don't be afraid of sharing that message. There's a lot of other people out there that feel the same. Maybe it's not in a position of leadership that you have, but share. And sometimes it takes time. Yeah. Uh, but the more you do, the more people hear, and you spread your message of 
a better world. Awesome. Is there anywhere people can find you if they need like tips and tricks, or are you not? You're you're busy. You've got the government no, on your hands. But That's you enough. can find me. I'm on social media, and I have a very open profile. So Tiago Fernandez de Lima on uh, Facebook. You can search on Instagram on Tiago Furley. So T H I A G O. F E R L I. Okay. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, send me a message, LinkedIn. I'm often trying to help people out. And if you have an idea, if you want to change the world, like let's 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 share. Brilliant. Let's yeah. do it. I'm cool. excited. Yes. Let's change the world and I'll see you later on the dance floor. Thank you so much. <laughs> see ya. Bye.